Today's video is a little bit different than my normal video. I am trying to learn how to service watches and that sort of thing, and I am taking classes, but uh, this is my first attempt at um, taking a watch apart and servicing it and putting it back together. So I thought I'd start with something simple like a pocket watch. And this one only cost me $15. I found it at a um, kind of a junk shop here locally. I figure, well, you know, it's only 15 bucks and it's old and it's mine, so I can do whatever I want with it. And I think that's a perfect place to start. I know that I haven't done many things right. I learned a ton while I was doing this. So be kind to me, but also... Uh, feel free to let me know what I should have done different or better. But anyway, uh, here's some information on the watch. Turns out it's a, um, a Luis Ulis Chopard watch that um, is marked L-U-C. And I think that was the predecessor or the, an early version of the Chopard that you hear about now. And they've always been... Uh, fairly premium watch. Luis um, was born in 1836 and died in 1915. And, um, but this watch is probably from around 1910. Uh, near as I could tell, the serial numbers match on the case and on the movement. And this has a pin set mechanism, which um, normally you just, if you just twist the, the crown, then it winds the watch, but if you push the pin in, then it actually sets the watch. It says it has the Breguet overcoil hairspring. It has a, a grouse hallmark, which means that it was 80% silver. Actually, there's a big grouse and a small grouse hallmark on there somewhere. And um, that was used between 1882 and 1934. It also has a crescent and crown hallmark, which is a German hallmark for silver. Um, for some reason, the, in Switzerland, they also stamped them with German hallmarks, as probably was never in Germany. Although I suspect maybe that was so that they would be all set in case they wanted to export it to Germany. So there's a bunch of writing on part of the really cool silver hunter case here and it says uh, and i'm probably totally going to screw up the pronunciations but it says ancra ligna droit um, the internet says that that means straight line lever escapement um, i guess that differs from the english lever uh, that was at some right angle beats me uh it says it has 15 rubis or I assume that's rubies, and you know, otherwise it's 15 jewels. It says two plateau. And far as I can tell, that means double roller on the escapement. Um, it's a, some way to help protect the impulse pin during shocks. And then uh, le vis visibilis. I think that's like lever, visible lever. Um, you can see the pallet jewels on the on the pallet fork, which apparently was different in some previous models where they the jewels were actually covered in some kind of way. And uh, this is all from the internet. Don't beats me if how much it's true or <laughs> or if I understood what they were saying. Um, and then there was a balancier coupe. I have no idea what this means. I've seen some things that said uh, compensating balance, balancier compense or something or other, but in French, I'm sure. And that would be like a temperature cons uh, compensating balance, like a bi bimetallic balance or something. Uh, but coupe, I could find no information about. And then the uh, spiral breguet, which means the breguet overcoil hairspring which was, at the time, like state-of-the-art. That was the best kind of hairspring that you could get. And from what I can tell, this one is an authentic overcoil style. And then finally it says chaton. Um, and what that is refers to as the uh, jewels 
at least some of the jewels are mounted in a little metal bit that can be easily replaced rather than press fitting the jewels themselves directly into the bridges and whatnot. Um, apparently there's a little metal replacement thing. I couldn't really tell how that if how many of jewels were really like that but it does look like the balance jewels um, uh, do you know are in that kind of metal carrier for the gem so show that it still winds a little bit even though it doesn't work real well it's got a, a broken spring but um, and you set this with, it's a pin set, which is the first time I've ever had a watch that did that. So here's Mr. Otto Fry. You can tell where I got that from. Um, some people lever these things off. I have one of these things that allows you to pull them off without a lever. So it uh, works real good for me. So that's what I used. And those are really cool. I don't know if they're heat blued or if they've been painted blue or just exactly what, but they've got some pretty blue on them. I kind of suspect they've been painted. That tiny little uh, second hand, there's no way I could get the, um, the protector underneath it, but this is a um, porcelain dial, so it's not really in too much danger of scratching and stuff. Six are so small. I'm afraid that I'm gonna like bend them into a circle if I'm not careful. You can actually open this up if you've got strong fingernails, but I chose to use my cool antique tool to pop it open. There's a heartbeat. There appears to be only one case screw that I could find. And it was basically already open, I think. Ah. There's the back side of the dial. Um, the uh, Dial feet, I think, were pretty loose already, so that just fell right off. It's got a couple of cracks and things in the actual porcelain, but it's not too bad. It's definitely not bad for 15 bucks. See the old uh, motion work wheels there. So I'm using a uh, plastic. Um, plastic tweezers that I got so that I was not to mar anything because I didn't have any bronze tweezers um, or brass tweezers I mean uh, but I fixed that since then I bought some after I started working on this I thought you know what the hell? I'm just gonna bite the bullet and get some of those mm -hmm. letting the power down a little bit there That's the uh, the old uh, stem release thingy. It's 
It's a little bit grody. Sorry, I kind of got off out of frame with this dude. And I'm using a cushion to um, work on this guy. Um, it would have been better to have a movement holder, but I, at the time I couldn't figure, I couldn't find one that fit. I actually found one later. I do have one from a big cache of um, antique watch repair tools that I've bought off of eBay. Oh, put that guy back in there to just keep it from coming being molested. I love the uh, the looks of that. It's just fancy, and those screws are awesome. They're um, I'm sure they're heat blued screws. They look absolutely like it to me. And the movement says 15 rubies. I think it's kind of funny, or rubis. It's a uh, flanch, you know. Um, but uh, most or many of the jewels don't actually look red. Eh? So there are many of them that are clear. So I think that's uh, interesting. get this guy out of there first thing so that I didn't like stick a screwdriver in the middle of it or something. There for a second I was like, what am I doing? I don't know. Oh yeah, I need to take that screw out of there. I did mention this is my first time taking one of these apart, right? So I'm going to be pretty fumbly. And these guys are in there pretty darn tight. I think there's a little slot that you could lever it out with a screwdriver. And I didn't discover that on this first one. Which just shows to go, yeah, I should be like seriously examining it before I even touch anything. But yeah, there you can see it on the bottom side. Um, but that's what this is all about, is learning, making my mistakes on this. So. Come out of there, out of that hole, rabbit. Doesn't want to let go. <laughs> it scares me. I'm always like, where the heck should I grab this darn thing at? I don't want to. I was just like dead afraid of just smushing that string, that spring all out of uh, shape. I don't know if you can see it here, but it says. Um, it says Breguet on there, and it does appear to be the, um, the Breguet overcoil style um, spring. So they didn't, uh, that was like state of the art, and so they didn't, um, uh, didn't go cheap on that. Yeah. Take the pallet bridge out of here and remove the pallet fork. And every one of these screws I looked at very closely so that I knew what the screw was going to look like and where it should go back into. Because they are. This watch is not too bad, um, but I've seen some of them that 
had all different kinds of sizes, and lengths, and screw height, or the head height, and all of that stuff. So I was just like being super, super um, aware of what they look like and so that I could have a prayer of getting them back into shape. Now there I discovered the little slot thing and said, ah, try that out the way it was meant to be taken out. And there you can see the little pins that they use to align everything with. I don't know if you can see, this one's a clear, clear gem on there. And these little guys are pretty clear looking too on the pallet fork. Focus, you stupid camera. There we go. You try to look the um, the ends. The ends look really good. They're not all bent over or worn out or anything. Actually, it kind of amazes me how clean this guy is, considering how old it is and and, and all. Of course, no idea when the last time somebody cleaned it was, or when the last time anybody used it. But there was uh, very little gradu in there. That's my made-up French word for... Uh, crap. Carefully remove those. Mm. 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 